I just wanted to say thank you first. I know a lot of people get to see you, um, but I have prayed for a very long time to be able to meet with you. Centoya Brown is begging for mercy. The 30-year-old is a college graduate, an advocate against sex trafficking, and a convicted murderer. What I did was horrible. There's, there's nothing to say to justify it. You can't justify it. You can't. You know, I killed Johnny Allen. He's gone. I thought he was breathing for a gun. And then what did you do? I shot him. Brown admits she did it, but maintains her sentence was too harsh for a teenager. It would take nearly 15 years and attention from A-list celebrities to put her case in the national spotlight and highlight juvenile justice in America. Documentary filmmaker Dan Berman has been following Brown's case since the beginning. Within a day after Centoya was arrested, the juvenile public defender who was defending Centoya gave me a call and said, we just arrested somebody who we think you ought to meet. Officials in Tennessee granted Berman access to the then teenager all the way through her criminal trial. The idea of the original film was really to explore how one child's situation could be a dot connector for juveniles across America. Brown was arrested for the murder of 43-year-old Johnny Allen. The teen said she was being prostituted by a pimp named Cutthroat. Cameras were rolling as she described Cutthroat to a psychiatrist. I remember mean, one time, the first time he did something to me is when he choked me and I passed out. Because he said I thought he was a joke. Mm -hmm. What else did he do to you? He talked real bad to me. Jack, you know, he pulled me by my hair and dragged me and stuff. He put guns up to me, told me to strip and stuff like that, getting out of the paper. Did you ever have sex with the guys? When I cut, but a gun up to me, I did. Centoya says Cutthroat sent her out to work on that August night in 2004. She ended up at a Sonic where she met Alan. He offered to pay her $150 and took her home where the two ended up in bed. At first he was just stroking me, but then it's like he just grabbed me like in between my legs, like he just grabbed it real hard. And he just gave me this look. It was like a very fierce look. And then it just sent these chills up my spine. I'm thinking he's gonna hit me or do something like that. But then he rolls over and reaches, like, he's reaching to the side of the bed or something, so I'm thinking, now oh, he's not finna hit me. He's finna get a gun. Mm -hmm. and, and what did you do at that time? I just grabbed the gun and I shot him. Prosecutors argued Brown's real motive was robbery. She ran away with cash, guns, and Allen's car, which she abandoned. She eventually anonymously called 911. The facts of the case didn't look good. What I couldn't see is that Centoya was at the tail end of three generations of violence against women. In Berman's 2011 documentary, Me Facing Life, Centoya's Story, the filmmaker dives deep into Brown's family background. She was given up for adoption very young. Berman met Brown's biological mother, Gina, who had Centoya when she was just 16. When I got pregnant, I was, I was drinking. And even after my pregnancy, I still drank on a daily basis. I could drink a bottle that was this big by myself. Every day? Every day. Tests would show Brown was on the fetal alcohol spectrum, a disorder that impacts the brain and behavior. Brown also says she was sexually abused as a child, abuse that continued into her teens, both by relatives and strangers. That person, while I was asleep, I woke up and he my him, he tricked me into it. He was his best friend, and he got me. In Allen's murder, Brown was eventually charged, tried, and convicted as an adult. Guilty, first degree murder. In Tennessee, that carries a life sentence, 60 years behind bars. Even with good behavior, Brown would have to serve at least 51 years before any chance of parole. Yeah, it's over with now. We are the most draconian nature when it comes to how we handle juveniles in this country with sentencing laws. A pair of recent Supreme Court rulings found mandatory life sentences without parole for juveniles were unconstitutional, except in rare circumstances. 
Since 2014, at least 24 states have enacted new measures, like requiring reviews of life sentences given to teenagers. Tennessee isn't one of them. A lot of people, not just in Tennessee, but across the country, believe that the juvenile justice system needs to be reformed to recognize that juvenile offenders are different from adult offenders. Attorney Ed Yarbrough joined Brown's case more than a year ago. Generally, uh, juveniles' brains are not fully developed uh, before age 18, and obviously the younger they are, the, the less development you have. One thing that has changed in Tennessee since Brown's trial, sex trafficking laws. No longer a child arrested for prostitution is considered as a prostitute. Under Tennessee law, they are now considered victims of sex trafficking, of human trafficking. That's new. It suggests that if Centoya were arrested today, she would have been looked at through a different lens. But as the world outside evolved, Brown grew up behind bars, at first struggling. I think I've been, for the past two years, working on making a personality. I've never had one before. She went on to earn her GED, then her associate's degree. After years of unsuccessful legal appeals, Brown's case got an unexpected boost from Hollywood. In 2017, Rihanna put Brown's story on Instagram, posting under the hashtag Free Centoya Brown, saying, something is horribly wrong when the system enables these rapists and the victim is thrown away for life. The hashtag spread like wildfire, attracting other celebrities, like actresses Ashley Judd, Amy Schumer, Elizabeth Banks, Alyssa Milano, and Kim Kardashian, saying, we have to do better and do what's right. Kardashian making headlines last year after lobbying President Trump to pardon Alice Johnson, a grandmother who was sentenced to life in prison for a first time nonviolent drug charge. She is someone that has completely rehabilitated herself. The president granted Johnson's pardon, saying those who pay their debt to society and better themselves in prison deserve a second chance. Instead of waiting out her sentence last year, the now 30-year-old Brown and her lawyers petitioned Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam to grant her clemency. It got a lot of publicity. Our job is to look at it on the legal merits and on her case and treat it just like every other one. At her hearing, Brown acknowledged her crime. When I was 16, I did a horrible thing. And I have carried that with me this whole time. But also pointed to her rehabilitation behind bars. I have a college degree now. Um, I have a family, a whole new family, a whole new community of people who love me, who believe in me, who support me including the Glitter Project, a program she developed to help girls who've been trafficked and exploited like she was. I've been able to help people, which is amazing. Young people, young kids, they listen. She was backed up by witnesses, including teachers and advocates, even a former prosecutor who was in charge of Brown's 2008 appeal. I argued that she needed to spend the rest of her life in prison. Soon after, he became one of her college teachers. If you grant her early release, she is going to invest herself in people who might otherwise come to this institution. She will seek them out. She will find them. She will mentor and minister to them. And she will keep other people from coming here. I do pray that you show me mercy and that you give me a second chance. Brown had to wait more than seven months to find out the governor's answer. Clemency granted. She was elated and she started to do a little dance. The moment was electric. I do think we made the right decision, but we tried to make it kind of absent all the noise. A spokesperson for Johnny Allen's family told the media they aren't happy with the decision, but hope Brown has changed. She will be released in August after serving 15 years in prison instead of 51. Dan Berman is now working on a sequel to his documentary out later this year, focusing on Brown and how criminal sentencing, particularly for juveniles, needs to change. Maybe the blindfold of justice can be removed just a little bit so that we can consider a bigger perspective for all children. Brown isn't asking the world to forget what she did. She would uh, readily admit that she uh, committed a crime and that the prison system, in effect, has saved her life. 
She says she just wants a chance to help other girls not make the same mistake. I can assure you that I will not let you down. I won't. I promise. Our thanks to Adrian and me facing life too. Centoya's Fight for Freedom, a new film by Daniel H. Berman Productions, will launch in 2019 along with a social justice campaign by Odyssey Impact, shining a light on the juvenile justice system. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.